It's Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. We Big speak. show today. We had an yeah. Olympic medalist on. She's lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Natalia's got the first women's medal for BMX, freestyle Ooh. BMX, right? She's a BMX bandit. She yes. is. She did it at a local skate park, which I'm guessing is near you since you're also Gladstone. I was. I thought Ooh. you were going to ask which skate park, but I was like, oh, no, maybe you weren't the guy that was hanging around there. No. Um, how old is she? I should have asked that. How old? I've been 10 cents. 26. She's 26. Yes. No. No. And I was in my skate park era. She would have been very young. Mm. So, no. Mm. But you know what? I'm sure if I told my mum her parents' names, she'd be like, yeah, yeah your yeah. dad used to work with her dad. Yeah. <laughs> my mum loves that one. Um, so she's on. She's a very funny girl. I tell you all about the World Games, which is way superior mm. to the Olympics. Yeah, they're very interesting, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm on board. Chess boxing. I'm just trying to combine a lot of them. Like, I don't think they even think that they'll he get picked up. He did not say chest boxing either, because that no. would be fun. Chess. Boing, 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 boing. Chess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Here is our podcast. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Once an Italia Deem of Australia. Oh, the first woman ever to win a BMX medal for Australia is this woman, Natalia Deem. Proof that all the great things come That's out of Gladstone. Me. No, no, don't take <laughs> that away. <laughs> Natalia Deem, Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's, it's still so surreal. Yeah, we should explain that because Maddie obviously is from Gladstone. He was so excited when he found that out. And I was like, oh, you didn't support her at the track, you know, when she was... <laughs> <laughs> Natalia is, nah. I think, quite a lot younger than me, uh, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> that... No, you always she's... support the Gladdy locals. Yes, yeah, yeah. Neither of you live there anymore, though? No. No, no. yeah, see? see? Like support them do. from yeah. afar. I like it. Um, c- congratulations. What an extraordinary, extraordinary feat to be able to, to achieve the medal. What was it like over in Paris? Just like Paris itself was amazing. Like the atmosphere and the amount of people that were there, like watching and cheering was amazing. Being in the village and like our Aussie building and everyone there watching the sport live on the TV and cheering for one another was amazing. But competing and, and having a crowd compared to Tokyo was just mm. like something else. Mm. Like it really was special. Yeah, that's like a lot of the athletes, it's their first Olympics with a crowd because they went to Tokyo as their first one and there was no one there. So it would be a completely different vibe. Yeah, for sure. And with the culture of, of BMX and I think <laughs> skateboarding as well, mm. is like we feed off that, like that vibe of the crowd and them cheering for us and, you know, to have that there and that happen was really special, really something cool to experience. Have you, just before you left, we've heard all about how many hookups happen in the, happen in the village where halfway <laughs> through the competing, mm-hmm. had any of the hooking up started yet? <laughs> <laughs> no hooking up. Right. Yeah. Maybe not for you, but I'm saying, <laughs> did you see other people hooking up? What is she watching? No. <laughs> She's... Well, I think like the, the Olympics these days are a lot different. And I think with COVID now, it's like mm. kind of stopped that because they want you out of the village within 48 hours after your event, which yeah. is when like the hooking up and the socializing really happens. Yeah. Mm. So oh. now that that's been taken, like there's none of that. Well, that I saw cause... anyway. Yeah. Well, Maddie's saying still 40 hours. That's plenty 40. for him. So he's like, I don't say what that seconds. Then, yeah. It's all I need, baby. Can, okay. Now, <laughs> the, this is for extra- sure. <laughs> for sure. It can definitely happen. Yeah. It didn't happen in my room or my watch. <laughs> I don't know, I should say. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I watched you compete and it was absolutely amazing. And I love hearing the commentary because you get to learn even more about you. And I was like, wow, ruptured your ACL mm. for the fifth time in your career and you're still there competing. Is there any moment where you're like, no, nah, I can't keep this up? Oh, nearly every time it happens, especially after Tokyo, it was like, okay, I'm done. Especially because I thought that the national team wouldn't give me another chance you know it's like you know oh my god she's hurt again mm. and, with it, and without their support I knew I wouldn't be able to do it without them so I was very fortunate and very lucky that they were they backed me in the whole way they supported me and we did all the right steps we could and you know before I knew it I was like okay I'm starting to feel better you know one day at a time you start to feel a lot more confident and then you know I just love what I do so I couldn't give it up mm. I had to try again 
we saw the welcome home that you got at Brisbane Airport. It was absolutely huge because I think you're one of the first to, you know, return a- as well. Did they upgrade you on the plane because you got your medal? So I'm actually the first medalist to come home, which wow. is crazy. I'm pretty sure I'm still the only one in Australia, which is wild. That's so uh, good. Yeah, but I was really looking forward to the flight home because I knew that, like, usually when medal, you know, if you get a medal, you get a business flight home. Yeah. And mm. got on the plane, saw, saw the the staff, and I was like, oh, am I going to get an upgrade? And they said we would, but it's fully booked. Like, oh, the whole plane. Oh, someone should have <laughs> stood up yeah. and walked to the back. I would have. I would have walked to the back of the plane. That's a lie. You would not pay. You I would not pay for crap. business from Paris. <laughs> no, I would not that if I would have paid. I've yeah. never paid before. Yeah. Exactly. If I paid, it would have been an accident that I was there. But no, if you saw someone with a medal, you wouldn't. Now, I'm very proud of you, Were you wearing your medal, Natalia? But if I, I paid. I was wearing no. the medal and my yeah. whole kit because I was actually nearly about to miss my flight. Like right. I went, I got to check in desk 10 minutes minutes before closing, so I was like, I need to wear the medal to make sure they get me on the plane. <laughs> nah, so, I, yeah. you would have, Maddie. I know you would have. How much he is would bit, definitely not have been. You no. wouldn't. It'd be like fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, I would get up if I saw one of the Lions players. I'd be like, no, you take mine. No, you'd stay so in the I seat, but he could still take it. Economy, yeah. yeah. And I, I got up there only because they those chairs weren't for sale because the, the tray desk wasn't working. So they said, we can put you in here, but the tray, the tray isn't working. Uh, I was like, I'll take it. It's better than normal economy. But they said, yeah, business was fully booked and wow. I couldn't get in there. Oh. Oh. You know what else has been amazing about these Olympics too, um, Natalia, is if it wasn't for the women, mm. we would be a lot further mm. down the medal tally. The girls from the pool to the skate park to the BMX, like yeah, in the, the, the kayaking, yeah. you've absolutely slayed it. I know. Can you believe it? 50% of women finally equal this year and we smash it with the medals. What a yeah. way to do it. Yeah, It is good. I love seeing all those percentages, you know, from many years ago, mm-hmm. like 10 years ago versus 20 years ago. Yeah. And yeah, it's exceptional. You've done amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, congratulations. Um, we know you're very busy. You've got a lot of interviews uh, to get through over uh, this week. So enjoy um, your medal and your amazing achievement. And will we see you in L.A. competing again? It's the million-dollar question at the moment, I think. Before before this Olympics, I was like, oh, probably not. But now that I've gotten a third and I'm finally you know, starting to peak, it is a possibility, but I'm going to take it one event at a time, one mm. year at a time, and, and see how we go. Oh, well, you got a yeah, taste we can't for it now. Got a yeah. taste. <laughs> uh, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Dear Abby. Sometimes in life, sh- gets real. And that's when you need Abby to help. I'm trying to help you. I really, really feel sorry for this mum because I think it, I, she's she's putting her kids first mm. and she, I think she was under the impression that the dad would do the same. It is a long email, so I am going to summarise and cut out a bit of it, but uh, any questions to ask. She has said, uh, Dear Abby, uh, I'm so glad the Brisbane Lions season has got better and better. Bring on finals. Here, here. Probably could have cut that bit out. No, I think that was important. The oh. other bits I have, see, I've just highlighted, yeah. <laughs> she said, anyway, long story short, I'm at wit's end with my ex-husband. We separated a deco ago and the divorce was extremely messy. She said, during this time, my youngest daughter, who was one and a half when we separated, now 12, has been diagnosed with ASD2, ADHD, ODD and anxiety. She's been seeing both a psychologist, an OT and a paediatrician. The cost of covering it all has been extremely expensive with no um, NDIS support or assistance Mm. um, from her father. And I struggle with her behavior from a young age. So apparently she was on NDIS. She's no longer on it. Um, She said that when her ex-husband broke up with his girlfriend, he even lived out the front of their house in a caravan and they had sort of discussed co-parenting. She was looking after the kids full time where he got himself back on his feet, which he has now. The daughter is requiring a lot of help Mm -hmm. and is costing a lot, which he's not helping with. So she's saying despite the court um, orders specifying 50-50, he only sees the children every other weekend. Mm -hmm. He says he can't do much more because of his work and he can't afford it. Yet he still drinks and buys motorbikes and insists that her issues are resulting from my parenting and believes that the 300 a month he pays for two children in child support should cover the costs. So she's gone to mediation. It didn't really work. She said, I have proposed a number of ways to divide it. 
She would like uh, medication to be administrated at both parents' homes. Mm-hmm. Um, avoid undermining the children's diagnosis. No one should comment on the child's weight in her presence, which has, she's put on weight as a result of the medication. Mm. And if she, he wants a second opinion. He's welcome to it. Um, and she also wants him to attend appointments and help with costs. Here's the thing. She actually has another daughter mm. and she co-parents with that older, uh, the older daughter's dad really quite well. So she goes, it can be done. Mm. But she said, my question is, am I being unreasonable by asking him to take on these responsibilities? Am I asking too much and should I just be paying it for it all myself? So is the issue here that he doesn't want to pay money or that he doesn't believe in the diagnosis Both. that she's been given? Both. He doesn't want to... Um, he doesn't the... believe in the diagnosis. He believes that it's just parenting issues, and I guess she doesn't have any issues. Right. So therefore, he's thinking it's a waste of it's money. It's a waste of money, mm. and I don't have to pay for it. And this is the biggest thing, because I feel like a lot of decisions in our household, my husband might not care about as much. Mm. So I, you know, let's be honest, my husband probably didn't rate speech therapy as much as what I did. Right. So I took them to speech therapy. Mm-hmm. But if we had separated... Mm. They wouldn't have got that. Yeah. And that's why I feel so sorry for her because she's like, I'm trying desperately to put my kids' needs mm. first. And he's like, no, I disagree with it. But if you're not parenting them the same amount of time, then you'd see different yeah. issues as but well. But the, and the, the uh, bad one there for me is that he won't administer the drugs when they're with them. 100%. Mm. But if he doesn't believe in, in that. In that. Mm. And that, then what's that's court being for- order? That's being forced on, on him for him to change who he is. And I'm not picking a side here. I'm just trying to see it from both angles is there will be parents at times who don't maybe don't believe... In ADHD medication or other medication. Correct. Yeah. And so therefore, he's like, when, you're, when I'm parenting you, that's my decision. I think mm. it would be really hard when you've separated, you've become independent. It's been over a decade. You didn't work out as a couple because you've got different thoughts. Mm. But then what happens? You can't say, I want my child to be parented a certain way when they're at your house. Mm. But there does need to be some consistency, right? Yeah. Yeah, there should be a baseline of, of consistency. Yeah. yeah. And if she actually, I mean, surely it's, it's a medical diagnosis. She, I mean, look, this is this is five pages long Yeah, of what she's went through and dealing with the kids' mental health. And it's easy to look at it from the outside and go, oh, is it that complicated? But when you're in it, like, it, it is. Mm. I think if this is just what I would do, if, if I was in his position and didn't believe in all the medications, um, well, then I would take more responsibility. And I would say, hey, why don't we try her living with me full time? I'll take on the responsibility of doing everything that I believe needs to happen to stop that. Mm. And then at least he would know. If he's only having the children a portion of the time and then trying to make these decisions, I can see how she feels like that. But she's 12 now. Mm -hmm. So if he hasn't been as involved, then this 12-year-old girl who's going through so much might not want to go and live with the dad full time because might not have a relationship. But I would be open to that because at least you'd be going, I've been dealing with this the whole time and I'm trying to do my best Mm. and I would love someone to to come and do what's best for the child. Mm. I don't know. I I don't know what you do with arguments of that because it's easy to go through the courts Mm -hmm. with things that are black and white, right? Yeah. Of like, hey, make sure you pay for school fees or you pay for uniforms. Mm, But when it comes to things where different doctors might say different things, Mm -hmm. then who's to enforce it? I don't know what happens with the courts. Maybe you've gone through this situation and maybe courts do say, no, the medication needs to be administrated Mm -hmm. by court order. Mm. But you probably, you could do that. Can you? I'd say so. Who knows? Hmm. Let's find out. 13, 10, 60. Uh, If you've been in this situation uh, with your partner or your ex-partner, we'd love to hear from you. 13, 10, 60. Uh, The lady is listening this morning. We'll take Mm -hmm. your calls next. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Dear Abby. Sometimes in life, gets real. And that's when you need Abby to help. I'm trying to help you. If you've got an issue, you think you're alone, I guarantee there's other people out there that are gone through it or are currently going through it. You can send an email, dear Abby at b105.com.au. I've got one uh, from a mum who said she's at a wit's end with her ex-husband. Separated over a dec- ago, decade ago. It was messy, but she said they've just got different views on parenting, especially one of their daughters who's having a lot of issues. She mm. has been diagnosed with ASD2, ADHD and ODD and anxiety. But he doesn't believe that she has any problems mm. and he doesn't believe in the medication. 
So she's like, well, no, we need to come to a decision with this. I need your help with the costs mm-hmm. of all the treatment and also to administer them when she's in your care. Because he's, he's of the belief that when she's with him, she's totally fine. It's only when yeah. she's at home. Yeah. He sa- apparently he said um, that he, she doesn't have any issues when he, uh, she's at his house. Mm. So it's your parenting. All right, that would go down fantastically, right. I, think I that's imagine. A, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, no, that's mm. what the five emails, five pages, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ingrid and Capara, what do you think about this situation? Um, I've got a similar situation with my daughter. She has attention deficit disorder mm-hmm. um, and also was on medication previously. Um, my, I had a few anxiety issues and I went away to my mum and he took her off the medication. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So he is in denial about what problem she has, I think, and doesn't want to deal with it um, a lot of the time. And so we have separated and moved to my mum. Mm-hmm. I deal with it on a daily basis. I've got um, NGIS for my daughter. Um, previously, we were having a conversation in mediation. He wanted to take over the NGIS. Mm. He thought I was getting them the money, which I wasn't. And as soon as I said, he goes, I want to be involved and all that other stuff, he, and I said, I wasn't getting the money. My daughter was. He went, yep, that was it. Right. So it's it's all, I do everything for her. He doesn't hang around but He doesn't get involved in it. Um, so it's a lot of pressure on the mum. Um and my daughter does have a lot of issues and stuff, and she does. She's growing up a lot now. Um, she's about to turn sixteen next week, and she's le- in the process of getting a learner. Right. So, so you're, so you're like, saying if he was around more, you would respect his opinion mm. a little bit yes, more, but he doesn't exactly. want to mm. doesn't want to be yeah. involved. So, so that's you feel. Fair it, enough. And I guess that is the thing, isn't it? The less involvement you have, the less mm, opinion you you're allowed to yeah, have. Yeah, you would think so. Mm. Becky and Petrie, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I'm in a very similar situation as well. My son was not even two when diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and celiac disease. Um, A month or so after that, we separated Mm. and he's nearly eight now and in the last 18 months have been diagnosed with ADHD, sensory processing disorder, global developmental delay, ASD level 2, we all don't get NDIS coverage, and I was told recently that because I get care as allowance from Sensling, that is a whole $150 a fortnight, that he has zero responsibility mm. for his medical costs in general. So right. we go to pediatrician, we see an endocrinologist, we go to OT every week or every fortnight. Which is not cheap. And it's costing me probably around $20,000 a year to do all of this. And he has zero responsibility. So you're saying the court doesn't um, take into medical bills? Uh, No, they will not even look at medical exemptions, potentially. I've tried saying, look, He's a diabetic. He's like his food costs so much more, mm. as you would understand. Yeah, like the gluten free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, yeah, that's interesting that they can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's get uh, sort of the other side of the coin here. Say for the father now, anonymous. You've seen your husband go through this. Yes. Um, so he just kind of got phoned up on a Tuesday night once to say, "By the way, your daughter's been diagnosed with." ADHD and ASD and she starts Ritalin tomorrow um, was not given the opportunity to be a part of any of that diagnosis process or um, you know have the medications explained or Mm. the diagnosis explained no questions asked and he's supposed to just accept the diagnosis when he wasn't a part of the whole process and we don't witness a lot of ADHD behaviours or meltdowns. Um, they probably that, do have yeah. ASD traits. Because mm. that's, that's really hard because I do see it from the other point of view because I was diagnosed with ADHD, bef- I would say, before it was 
well known mm. um, and had to take medication. And for me personally, I'm not supportive of medication in most of the cases. I know there are extreme. But you're saying that they, they don't, need, I guess you never need two parents to come on board and give permission in that case, do you? Well, I don't know what the rules are about yeah. that, but I know that he was never given the, the chance to. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I guess a lot of men, and I would feel the same if I was told, rung and told, hey, tomorrow these drugs are being given to your child mm. and you weren't even explained about any of it. Mm. Um, yeah, well, there's two different opinions on it. And don't get me wrong there. Mm. I know that a lot of people have to have it. I know a lot of teachers do it. But I guess there are two different views on it yeah. where it's not like type 1 diabetes mm-hmm. where you 100% definitely mm. do yeah. need it. It can improve your life. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, and we also don't know in this situation whether or not maybe he was part of the the process yeah. all those years ago because they sound like they're not new issues. No. Yeah. Uh, Ron, morning. Morning. How fun's co-parenting? <laughs> it's, it's awesome. <laughs> hey, no, I, I, I decided I needed to call in because I just wanted to tell everybody out there it does get better. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm seven years to it now. It was a, a very messy divorce, all of the lawyers, all of that jazz, no communication, all that. Um, my wife, ex-wife, believes um, he was celiac. I didn't believe he was. Uh, went through the process. Um, he's actually had a colonoscopy when he was six, just uh-huh. to sort of knuckle down on the um, get medical proof. Mm. Uh, but, but now um, we co-parent amazingly. Um, I think a lot of the emotion in the separation in those early years take over, which is a little bit sad because we do need to remember to put the kids first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, just wanted to say it does get better. I think you people... If you both focus on the child, yeah. then you I think people need to hear that, Ron. Was there a turning point? Like, was there a little bit of you that had to go, I need to maybe give a little bit in this scenario? Was there a turning point for you? Um, I, like I said, I think it really was a combination. Well, we, we both had to give, right? Because yeah. I yeah. think... There were some things that she was extremely stubborn on, mm. um, but I think the turning point was very much when we kind of let go of the relationship pain. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I and I think and I'm hearing I'm hearing these people talking about these things. And, you know, there's a there's very clear pain that's still there. Uh, so, well, good on you, mate. Opinion. Yeah, easy done, mate. Thank you for calling. Yeah, Yeah, good on you, buddy. Appreciate it. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Welcome to the greatest sporting spectacle on earth. Yeah, the Olympics are pretty cool. They're all right. But there is another event that is infinitely better that I've only just discovered and I am all in. And the Olympics owes a huge debt to this. It's called, and I can't believe I've never heard of this before. And you might not have either. Tell me if you've heard of the World Games. Almost as big. No. 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 no I don't think so. And it is where the Olympics get their sports from. What do you mean? That's how they choose which sports go in the Olympics. They pick them from the World Games. So what, there's like an Aldi Olympics? Yes! That's a very good description of what it is. But do they have the same athletes? It's not like Simone Biles is going in the World no, no, Games. no, no, because but sh- gymnastics would have started there and then gone to the Olympics. Right. So and the world, okay. Yeah. Where did the World Games originate then if the Olympics was in Greece? I uh, don't know, but they've been around since 1980. Right. So the Olympics were first. Yeah, by a long shot, yeah. But have a listen to some of the things you can expect to see there. 34 sports, most you're probably seeing for the first time. Swimming, but with fins. Speed skating, using inline skates. And drone racing, through gates, around obstacles, against the clock. Yeah. Having drone racing. So they test it. It's kind of like, hey, test mm. it there. If it works, then mm-hmm. we'll pitch it to the Olympics. If it doesn't, yeah. we won't waste our time, right? Yeah, here's an explanation of what it is. They're the emerging sports. These are the fastest growing sports under the Olympic movement. And this is their proving ground. So these sports are auditioning for a spot in the Olympics. This is their audition uh, to be on the Summer Olympic platform. And some of these sports are epic. So is that where, epic. like, pole dancing? Remembering pole dancing mm. was like an exhibition sport, I think, for the Commonwealth Games or something like that. Yeah. So 
Is, is it things like that? Kind of like that. So I've got one that would be perfect for Jagger because he loves boxing, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Does he play chess as well or is that just Finn? Uh, he can play chess, but the other ones like it. Because at the World Games... Boxing, chess. Chess, boxing. You play a blitz round of chess, then mm. you have a round of boxing, then you go back to the chess. That sounds so, like just siblings playing chess. Well, yeah. not Someone really. Someone wins and they I, have a punch on. I, and I it's won my... by either a checkmate <laughs> or a knockout. It's just I made my son do... Um, Chess, remember, as a sport at mm. school, and those chess players were amazing, but they weren't into boxing. Uh huh. Maybe that's what makes it so great because yeah. it's all big swing and no ding. <laughs> <laughs> so like, or you get you get the athlete; he's really good at chess but terrible at boxing, or you get the one that's really good at uh, boxing but terrible at chess. Yeah. yeah, right. But you'd watch it, wouldn't you? No. Okay. What about the military pentathlon, which is kind of like the normal pentathlon, except one of the things in it is grenade throwing. Right. Mm hmm. Grenade throwing. Have you watched this? Yes. Unfortunately, they don't use grenades. They just use a thing that's shaped uh, like a I know, I know, I know. I'm picturing I know. someone pulling a pin and just going to pop a War. grenade. Like that you said in this, uh, fin swimming. That's actually like with a big fin on your, your feet. Like, like you a mermaid. Like, yeah. Like a mermaid yep. tail. Mermaid, mm-hmm. merman. Yep. Okay. Um, the drone racing is epic. As yeah, well. that's pretty So cool. is anything like eSports into this? Because I always find that's really weird. You I, know, when it's like uh, everyone goes to the stadium and they watch people play computer games and that's classed as a sport. Uh, yeah. Can't it be a that's, hobby? That's um, big enough for, on itself. It doesn't need to be in the Olympics. That's not a sport though, right? Yeah, it's a sport. If what, you're competing. What's the definition of... Uh, I guess if you're competing at something to win, that's a fingers sport. move. Yeah. You're, you're playing a virtual sport. Mm. Mm. I think anything mm. they can monetize, they'll call it a sport to... Anything I like to have a little bit watch. like uh, athletic ability in like, you know, the lung capacity or something or some sort of muscle strength. When you're playing the game, it's like... What about canoe polo then? Canoe polo. Okay. So, mm. With horses? <laughs> <laughs> canoe on a horse in the water. Yeah. <laughs> right. Corf ball? What's corf ball? Exactly, right? You, know, you get to experience new sports you've never heard of. It's a ball sport with similarities to netball and basketball. Two teams of eight players, four female players and four males. Pickleball's probably in there, is it? No, but I it, it, it could, yeah, I think it has been. Yes. Right. Yeah, but that's not the far The fastest off. growing sport in the world, pickleball. Mm. It doesn't sound nice to hear it, though. Yeah, it's like, mm, no. Mm. But I think its its name is what's its charm as well, because you're like, pickleball? What's mm. that? Mm. And it doesn't have anything to do with it, does it really? No pickles involved. No. Smaller but I, court. Is that why it's called pickleball? I don't know. It uh. is a smaller court, and you've got mm. a hard ball. Mm. And it's kind of like uh, ping pong, but with... It's halfway between ping pong and tennis? Mm. Yeah, so, I'll, yeah, I'll mm. give you that. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, do people just pitch sports? So they go, hey, we've started They also sport. have, they have exhibition sports in the one that, yeah, in the World Games as well. And they get bizarre. There's one that's just um, chopping, not, not like axe chopping wood, but just chopping right. wood with a knife. I mean, really, we have Bleeding. just accepted pole vault as normal. 100%. And that, that is not normal sport. Neither hammer throw. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's been there so long that we're like, Yeah, that oh, you yeah. accept that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. You strip them all back, they all look pretty stupid. All right. Mm. Well, what's this space for drone racing in 2023? And grenade throwing. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. The river scene has been the scene of an incident. Now, we all remember when they were saying that the Olympics were coming to Paris that the mayor and the prime minister of uh, Paris did say that the river is clean enough after they spent like $37 billion on cleaning it up that they were both going to swim in it. Well, they talk shit. Time to swim in it now. That's well, right. then people wanted to poo in it, you told <laughs> they us. They did. The poo protest. Why did they want to poo? poo? Like, wait, wait, why? Because they're saying you've wasted all that money. It's not clean. We're going to prove it. We're going to poo in it for you. Well, that and I think, I think the official no. uh, slogan was, we've been eating politicians shit for years. It's uh, about time that they okay, eat yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Even to the point, God go. bless the French, that if you lived upstream, they gave you the date and time you needed to poop in the river for it to float down and make it at the exact same time that the mayor was swimming in it. It's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. <laughs> Met a all a few days before. Mm, yeah. And the mayor did swim in it, and then she had some things to say about it, saying it was fine. To uh, be here today and swim together, it's very lucky and happy day. It's also for the planet, you know, and for the river and for the ocean. Look, it's not bad that they want to clean up the river. No. I no. guess it's just people saying you could have done it before, mm. not just for the Olympics. Mm. It's a weird one, though. Like, even when there was a drought, remember, in Toowoomba, and they wanted to turn their sewage water into water? And oh, they called yeah. it Poo Woomba. Yeah. Like, now, now the talk of 
the games has become the poopy river. We would never swim in the Brisbane River. Like, I mean, you wouldn't put your head in to. dirt. I, I know. To. We all have heard the stories. Mm-hmm. It used to be blue. I get it. But would you just jump down there and have a little bit of a swim and put your mouth in it, drink some water? I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't swim in it, not because it's dirty, just because of all the sharks, which they also have that problem in Paris, if you have seen the Netflix film Under Paris. Mm, right. Do they uh, wear but, berets, those sharks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not dernant, dernant. It's oh, 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 oh. Uh, <laughs> This was all about because they were going to do the uh, triathlon, which yes. obviously features a swimming section. They were going to do mm. the swimming section in the river. So much so that one athlete said, "I've been prepared." <laughs> he said, "I've been preparing for the um, Paris Olympic Games. I haven't been washing my hands after going to the bathroom, like building up a tolerance." I mean, that's for not e. a, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know what. It's E. coli, isn't yeah, it? It's e. Yeah, E. coli, yes. Yeah. Uh, and God bless them, they did do the uh, triathlon, and a number of the athletes, a number of them, a oh. lot of them, have come down sick. One guy vomited 10 times after the race. They've all been given antibiotics that they have to take and courses to take after they so even get home. So is that what they home. got? You, you cross mm. the finish line, they give you a course of antibiotics? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's not nice. That is not nice. And they're all sick? They're all sick. Yeah. Right. That's... <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all go to holiday in Bali, knowing yeah. the risks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we're not competing in Olympic sport. No, no but you don't get true. sick till after you compete. So. Yeah. That's my fault. I had too many margaritas and decided, uh, yeah, cool, I how, could. How many? Have the water. Uh. Do you know what I mean? Like that's mm. my doing. This is a bit mm. different when you sign up to well, do I in think, a sport. No, and I think but, if they're doing this, they're doing the surfing in Tahiti. They could have done. The triathlon there. Well, they also have, um, yeah, uh, access to the beaches there. I guess yeah, good point. Cold, yeah. You could swim to Britain. Here um, is one of the Canadian athletes talking about it. You crossed the finish line, and unfortunately, it all came out. And in fact, I think you've you've thrown up ten times after the race. Is uh, that accurate? Pretty pretty close. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. So so what happened? Is that is that a common thing for you after uh, a race? Not super common, but it happens sometimes. I like just happen to swallow a bunch of water in the race. Mmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, feeling sick thinking about Yeah, that. I do that. I, I, get, I get secondhand sickness and, and I think sympathy I'm, sickness when yeah. I hear about this stuff. Too and I'm going pathetic. on and on about immunity. I'm obsessed with you not getting sick when we I, get sick. She wants to sample your blood. No, I just, I feel like if everyone, like, isn't it weird when everyone goes down with the same sickness and you're like, there's that one person at a wedding that had exactly the same fish and they were fine. Mm. That's me at the moment here. You've all been getting sick and I am, I don't know what's happened, but I'm just cruising along. Mm. Poisoning you all. Yeah. <laughs> Kat was doing a gig uh, on the weekend with the Nelson twins. They're a comedy duo act, mm. uh, two brothers, obviously. And they said they were at a, um, a, fest, a twins festival. There. I think they were trying to break the world record for uh, most twins at a dinner. Okay, yeah. Uh, and it was a seafood dinner and it was outdoors and they left the seafood outdoors. No, they did not. And everyone who attended... The twins dinner fest, and it was like over 200, 300 people um, got sick. Which mm. is the time. Remember, there was a park uh, a party recently at Norman, Norman Park. Park. Yes. Yeah. And I know because the guy made a joke saying it was going really well, but apparently That's everyone right. had to bring a plate, didn't yeah. they? And everyone got sick from everyone that. Everyone got sick from it, yeah. Let's ask that question then. 13, 10, 60. Uh, where did everyone get sick? Mm. Did you have like a bit of a family shindig and then everyone fell ill from. Mm. I don't know, some awful pasta or something like that. Maybe you used to have chicken pox parties was a thing yes. back in the day. Yeah. Because there's a, one of my uh, kids' schools, they've all got chicken pox a class. Mm-hmm. And now I was retro. like, yeah, but apparently, do you get a booster in year five? Yeah. So all these people hadn't got a booster, so it was a year before. Uh, right. Yeah, I remember but that. But yeah, but it used to be before there was a vaccine for it. Your cousin's like, got chicken pox? You're going for a sleepover? Yeah, get it out of the house. way. Mm. And then you'd come home. You'd have been the only one that wouldn't get it. Yeah. I've never had chicken pox. Oh my, my sister's God. had it. Yeah. You know, when I was younger too, I was staying um, at my cousin's place. He had glandular fever. Mm. And I was on the trundle in the bedroom with him. Didn't get it. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Even viruses hate me. <laughs> they want nothing to do with me. <laughs> Ooh, that body. Uh, no, no, thank no, you. No. Uh, Dolce in Deception Bay. When did everybody get sick at your party? Uh, actually, it was a primary school end of year Christmas oh. party, and there was only 30 kids in the whole school, and um, a, one family bought, you know, the caramel chocolate slices, uh-huh. and... They ended up, like, one of the parents had gastro. One of their children had said later, <laughs> everyone got gastro oh. that 
from the school. So the actual Christmas party, the uh, Christmas breakup concert on the Friday couldn't go forward because everybody was sick, oh. the whole class, like, and all the parents. Oh. One of the kids, one of the kids' parents who actually made the chocolates life dobbed them in and said, oh, yeah, my mum was sick last, like, yesterday. <laughs> and so everyone was sick. So for two days, it was terrible. And mm. if there's only 30 kids in the school, it would have been a small town. That Did that wipe out pretty much uh, the whole town? It practically did, yes. Mm. It practically did because it was, like, I mean, people came from all over to that little little school, but, yes, it did wipe up the whole town. People <laughs> can't go to work or anything. Oh, wow. It's a cake sale for them. Everyone yeah. is to bring something, not you, again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Talia in Crestmead, when did everybody get sick? Um, we had an interclub bay cruise about 10 years ago, and same thing, someone brought COVID along. I'm uh, sorry, not COVID, mm-hmm. gastro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, about 150 of us got gastro in a week. 150! Oh. Jeez, there must be different strains, eh? Hey? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Do you... My boss tech up. Your boss as well. It's not mm. just my boss, sorry. Mm. Good to know. And remember, we all went to a big function and someone got sick and they were trying to work out if it was a restaurant. So then they brought all poo samples in for us to do. Remember? Mm. They sent the email and said, hey, if anyone else has got sick, can you please do a sample? And they had all the bags and stuff like that. And everyone's like, oh. Well, was management no. asking asking for <laughs> oh, to have no, it? it was one of the other said. girls. Yeah. I wanted, oh, so one of the staff one members. One of the staff did, and she was really wanting to get everyone. I was like, this feels like, no, thank you. <laughs> this feels weird. Yeah. yeah. Only if you hold the bag for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Teresa. Yeah. Um, so my little girl's birthday, um, I have been dubbed the, um, the food poisoning queen, um, <laughs> but I've been wrongly labelled because... Uh, we effectively had 40 people at this party. Um, someone brought their sick little baby, but it was a cute little baby, so everyone held it. Uh, and um, and then they blamed me for food poisoning. But no. um, we took everyone out. Um, I lost five kilos uh, because... <laughs> I just couldn't keep anything down. Well, not and, all bad, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's, that's worse than it was yours as well. You're like, no, it wasn't. It was yeah. the cute baby. Seven years later, no one wants to come to the party and eat my food. Wow. They, oh. they check whether uh, I've catered or uh, <laughs> if I've brought in. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. So they're very open about it. They're, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's wow. got a reputation. Oh, yeah. Therese. I mean, yeah. at least no one asks you to cook anything for them now. Look at the silver linings to that. You just rock up. Mm. I maintain it was uh, patient zero was the baby. The baby. And the baby, yeah. 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 yeah, that baby's now eight going, stop blaming me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. In your life, have you been told that you're too emotional? No. Does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that a lot of guys get told that, that you're too emotional, you're overreacting, it's a bit too much. And it's an interesting concept because I have been told that my whole life growing up because my dad is quite rational. Mm. And when I say rational, I realise now that he doesn't have any empathy. Right. And this has been something that I've been thinking about for a long time and I've said that my husband doesn't as well. Mm. And I was like... I, I feel like, and I've been saying to, to Ash, right, because every time she's like, oh, I asked someone to like do something, but then I felt really sorry for him. I'm like, that's interesting, isn't it? Because if you guys did that, I don't think you would think about other people's feelings as much. Mm. And maybe, maybe that is a really good thing. That we don't care about other people's feelings? I don't think it's that you don't <laughs> care. I don't, that's what, that's what I reckon is confusing because I always mm. go that I think Scotty doesn't care. And I was talking about him, uh, this on the weekend, I was talking about it a bit more because mm. um, I was speaking to a friend of mine and she's a lawyer and she's like, you can't have empathy, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do your job. Mm. So she's like, now there is this whole disorder that people are talking about and it is especially for women mm. and often for mums that we're having too much empathy that we can't function ourselves. Oh, yeah, now I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was talking about it with Scotty and I was like, so do you not care? And he goes, I do care but I know that you'll be all right. Or no, I know that you've got to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Where I will go and have a conversation with someone and I'll be like, oh, they were really mean or whatever. And I'll go, oh, 
But do you know what? They're having such a hard time. And but that's no excuse. That just because having a hard time doesn't mean like they can treat everyone else like crap. I feel like it is. And then I go through this whole thing of going, oh, well, I can't actually stand up for myself. Mm. So now there's this this whole thing at the moment where people are becoming so, I guess, empathetic to other people mm. that it's becoming a, a mental health disorder that we're not looking after ourselves because mm. they're so worried about everyone else. And it's the whole thing of fit your own mask before fitting others. Mm. Do you think part of that also is we are in a society now where we share yeah. everything? Mm. Like, what, yeah. you know... Once upon a time, you would share maybe a couple of things that you were going through. Oh, oh sorry. I I'm not going to feel empathetic that you owe me a card and a... Oh. Um, I think I might get um, ginger beer. Yeah. That's all right. No worries. I'll shake you out. Yeah. His phone went off. And Crown his phone lager goes for me. Not Christmas what? time, mate. Can't happen. Crown lager? Yeah. You don't drink that, man. I do. Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fancy no. bean. Um, but I think, I think everyone's always... You know, every little thing is a huge problem in life. Yes. And we put it on the internet and whatever. So you think, I think we as humans feed off more of that getting the empathy. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah, Rather than it's, going, it's, mm, here is a problem that I have. Everything is everyone is a problem all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I, Ash and I have decided that we're going to be a, more like Scott. Okay. Yeah. Unreliable. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Just going off what you've said. Yeah. <laughs> she can say it. No, I just... But a fantastic lover. Because Ash is like, I'm really worried about you. I'm like, but don't be worried about me. You shouldn't be worried about me. You should be worried about yourself. And I was like, you need to take care of yourself because if you're so worried about everyone else, and she does, she's like our mama bear and she's so concerned about what everyone else is going through mm. that she never talks about what she's going through. Oh, my life's boring though. No, it's yeah. not. It's, that's the whole thing. But I was like, and I but don't think... Maybe like her life is good. Mm. It is good. It is good, but then she doesn't ask people to do things because she thinks, oh, they're, they're going through a lot. Do you think that or do you just think they're useless and they won't be able to do it? <laughs> I think ah. that's what it is. Option B. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying. You let, I, I think women let other people walk over them a little bit more. Yeah, so much. Mm. rather, And, you know, we constantly go, oh, I hope they're going to be okay. I'm worried about them. I'm worried about this. And then you don't worry about yourself and you just end up doing a, a bad job with everything. Mm. And then everyone feels b- bad for you. And yes. it's a cycle that continues. Mm. So there is such a thing as being too empathetic. Mm. Mm. So take care of yourself. Well, you guys. can't spell empathetic without pathetic. Need MP. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexic, sorry. Uh, uh, C, carry the so carry the carry the empathetic, and then you got to do A-I-A-B-C. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Alpha box tomorrow. Uh, it'll be the eighth of August. Here are answers for the seven and eight a.m. game to win ten grand. Seven a.m. Your letter is I. Some of your answers are Indiana, into you, and iguana. And at eight, it's S. And some of your answers are Survivor, Suede, and Skyfall. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Stab Abby and Matt. The B one hundred and five Breakfast Show.